Hello, and thank you for joining us on this special day. Throughout the month of November, the city of Los Angeles celebrates Transgender Awareness Month. It's an opportunity, you need to go fast, to highlight the visibility and achievements of this remarkable community, as well as elevate the many challenges and obstacles that still exist for transgender and gender nonconforming individuals. The trans community is incredibly diverse. Some trans people identify as trans men or trans women, while others may describe themselves as non-binary, gender queer, gender non-conforming, agender, bigender, or other identities that reflect their personal experience. While trans people are growing increasingly visible in both popular culture and in daily life, they still face widespread discrimination, stigma, and systemic inequality. For example, trans people live in poverty at elevated rates. And for trans people of color, these rates are even higher. Around 29% of trans adults live in poverty, as well as 39% of black trans adults, 48% of Latinx trans adults, and 35% of Alaska Native Asian, Native Americans, and Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander trans adults live on the margins. Trans people face a legal system that often does not protect them from discrimination based on their gender identity. State legislatures across the country are uh, debating, and in some cases, passing legislation specifically designed to prohibit trans people from accessing public restrooms that correspond with their gender identity. In other cases, Legislators are creating exemptions based on religious beliefs that would allow discrimination against all LGBTQ people. Many states do not allow trans people to update their identification documents to match their gender identity. Others require evidence of medical transition, which can be prohibitively expensive and is not something that all trans people even want. The trans community faces considerable discrimination due to more than a century of being characterized as mentally ill, socially deviant, and predatory, or all of the above. These stigmas prevent them from accessing necessary services for their survival and well-being. Nationally, only 30% of women's shelters are willing to house trans women. 27% of trans people have been fired, not hired, or denied a promotion due to their trans identity. And 49% of trans adults and 55% of trans adults of color said they were unable to vote in at least one election in their life because of fear of or experiencing discrimination at the polls. Trans people experience violence at rates far greater than the average person. 54% of trans people have experienced some form of intimate partner violence. 47% have been sexually assaulted in their lifetime. And nearly one in 10 were physically assaulted between 2014 and 2015. This type of violence can be fatal. At least 27 trans and gender nonconforming people have been killed in 2020 thus far. The same number of fatalities observed in 2019, which was the highest number of hate crimes across the United States on record. While we face another grim statistic in the year 2020, this year has also produced amazing accomplishments for the community. In the 2020 general election, voters elected six transgender candidates to state office, a historic turn that will increase the number of trans elected officials in state legislatures from four to seven nationwide. Openly trans candidates were elected or re-elected in Arkansas, California, Colorado, Delaware, Illinois, Kansas, and New Hampshire, and Vermont. And for the first time in history, in another US first, a non-binary candidate won election as a state representative in Oklahoma City. The LGBTQ Victory Fund reports that the total number of transgender elected officials nationwide will jump from an existing 28 to 32 
when new winners take office next year. These wins are a signal that transgender people are gaining acceptance. The success of so many trans candidates in a time of deep division is an inspiration to the trans and LGBTQ communities. There are re uh, many reasons the City of Los Angeles acknowledges Transgender Awareness Month. Joining me to continue this conversation is Capri Maddox, the general manager of LA's Civil and Human Rights Department. Capri. Thank you so much, Councilman. I think um, it's just, it's unfortunate that we have the stats that you have to, um, you mentioned as it relates to some of the unfortunate things that have happened and some things that definitely need to be changed. But we are enlightened in Los Angeles and we want to celebrate our transgender community. They are our brothers and sisters and fellow Angelinos here. So thank you for putting this forum together. I think we cannot hear it enough how much we need to serve and make sure that Los Angeles is for everyone. Um, when you think about, um, some of the stats you mentioned as it relates to, you know, hate crimes and hate incidents. Um, I really appreciate the fact that we have partnerships with our nonprofit community as well as LAPD to um, be certain to bring forward punishment for those that have um, done these crimes and, the, and these wrongs. But the, what I wanna talk to you today about is visibility. We wanna make sure that our transgender community is visible here in Los Angeles and celebrate it um, as the mosaic we have in Los Angeles of, of diversity and of backgrounds and in and, and, and every way. I really want to um, take a moment just to talk quickly about the Civil and Human Rights Department. Um, we have four pillars that we address. And in all of these pillars, we have um, a place for us to serve our transgender community. And in all communities in the city, but particularly our transgender community. And I'd like to just give you a, a couple of them. We have the commission support, which actually has the Human Relations Commission, the Commission of the Status of Women, and the Civil Rights Commission. But in the Human Relations Commission, we have an opportunity for our Transgender Advisory Council to serve. And we know that Mother um, Karina is the president of that um, of that operation and of that advisory council. But I really want us to talk about um, other things that our department is doing as it relates to outreach. We're doing hate crime prevention work. This is one of the forms that we, we participate in and we also have hosted other events as well. But I really wanna be sure that to say that council has uh, preliminary given us resources to provide hate bias anti-bias and hate crime prevention training for the communities um, of Los Angeles. And I think that is really important because we don't only want to react to things that happen in this space. We want to be preventative. And as the mother of a middle schooler, I think it's important for us to start young. I, I'd like to just talk to you quickly about discrimination enforcement. If someone discriminates against transgen transgender uh, members of Los Angeles, we have a place to um, bring cases if they have their civil and human rights violated in four areas, commerce, education, employment, and housing. And then the last component that I'm really excited about, Councilman, is the opportunity for our equity and empowerment space where we will focus on um, looking at things through the policy equity lens to make sure that our policies are spot on in Los Angeles to think about all communities, rich, poor, uh, transgender, um, or otherwise. We wanna be sure that we are servicing all communities and to look at other legislation, and you, um, as well as some other elected officials stood with us as we mentioned, um, as we, as we dealt with an issue with HUD that you mentioned earlier, we have um, some people that are putting legislation together saying, if you wanna come to the shelter, it's gonna be segregated based on your gender at birth. That is unacceptable and we need to stand against those policies. The next thing that I just wanna talk about quickly is the opportunity for us to have upward mobility, upward mobility for all that's helping people get into the middle class and beyond. Not so much just for the transgender population, 
but for us, because we are missing out on the wealth and the talent of this community, the wealth of talent in this community by not giving them access to opportunities, by not making sure people are educated or housed, et cetera. So when we think about visibility, we want to let you know that we at the Civil Human Rights Department, that a rising tide lifts all boats. And we want to lift up our transgender community so that they are visible, empowered, and a, um, a um, reflection of all that is good here in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you for having us. Capri, as anyone who is viewing this can see, Capri Maddox has so much to offer, a lifetime of lived experience and professional experience that provides insight, for making sure that all communities, including the trans and non-binary communities, are seen and heard in our city. Capri, I can't thank you enough. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce Assistant Chief B. Gramala, uh, our friend, my personal friend for well over a decade now, to make some special remarks on behalf of the Los Angeles Police Department. Assistant Chief B. Gramala. Thank you so much, Councilmember O'Farrell. Uh, to you, your team, Tony Aranaga, uh, David Cano, thank you for always making November special. Despite the fact that we have video screens that are keeping us all apart, I still feel the warmth and fellowship from everyone who is participating in this transgender month of awareness and remembrance. To Capri Maddox, your team, Francisco Ortega, thank you for making partnership a true term of connectivity, not one that is just nice to say and provides lip service to the terminology, but something where we know that if there's a transgender member of our community, as members in a public safety network, we can pick up the phone, call you, and find the appropriate way to provide services and a safety net for those who are being victimized all too often and without any cause whatsoever. There's just a few things in messaging I'd like to share. First, in this season of Thanksgiving, I would like to extend my personal and heartfelt gratitude to the members of the transgender community who have embraced me, who have taught me, who have educated me in ways that have enriched my life. So I say thank you. With my public safety hat, there's a few thoughts I would like to share with you today. We, within public safety, will accept nothing less than true support, responsiveness, and accountability to the community. The transgender community has come forth in the past 11 months in a variety of ways to help the Los Angeles Police Department as true partners in uh, combating and bringing those to justice who have uh, been participatory in hate crimes and hate incidents within Los Angeles. We could not have done it without you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the trust you have placed in us so that we can ensure that those who would have any inkling to create anything negative in action, deed, or word to a member of the transgender community that there is zero zero chance that they will get away with it here within the city of angels. Another thought I'd like to share with you. I hope that in 2021, we can throw out the word tolerance. Tolerance to me is something that should not be part of our vocabulary when we're talking about uh, members of the trans community. Uh, we are here to embrace. We are here to celebrate individuality. Um, and we are also here to remember the importance of transgender members of our community to creating the beautiful fabric that is Los Angeles. So in closing, I'm grateful for you. You have my commitment to see that members of the Los Angeles Police Department serve you with any needs that you have directly. And please know that I'm always available to you personally through email, um, or text messaging if there is a situation which you find yourself encountering or a loved one or a member of the community with which I can be helpful. Once again, I thank you so much and it's just so wonderful to be with all of you and also um, to celebrate the memories as I know we will do later 
in this programming of those that have left us far too soon um, and the loved ones they have left behind. Thank you. I, I can't thank you enough, uh, Assistant Chief B. Germala. You, you, now you've heard from Capri Maddox, you've heard from Chief B. Germala, who are helping provide the structure and cone of protection for this community. And they're also spirit guides. They speak from the heart. And our approach, our collective approach is one of coming from a place of love. And that's very clear. And the next person I'd like to introduce is, I think, our ultimate spirit guide uh, in this endeavor. And that is Chairwoman Karina Samala uh, of the Trans Gender Advisory Council, uh, who is here to say a few words. Uh, Karina, welcome. And we can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Council Member Mitchell Farrell. This year has been difficult for everyone, and the transgender community is facing grave challenges at the various fronts as the pandemic rages on. It has revealed the drastic inequities faced by the transgender community. These hardships seems to be amplified by the outgoing administration that has marginalized the community and given rise to acts of intimidation, harassment, violence, and hate crimes across the nation against the transgender community, but more specifically, trans women of color. Here in Los Angeles, we have seen our community assaulted mocked and mistreated. We've also seen the quick response to those incidents by our LAPD partners. In particular, our ongoing collaboration with the Office of Assistant Chief Grimala, who has been a true partner in building trust for our community. It was hopeful that, that cruelty against our community and peak during the HIV pandemic. And sadly, the transgender community continues to bear the brunt of the hateful rhetoric that often led to the trauma, isolation, and violence. But now, under the COVID-19 pandemic, we have became a target yet another from those who refuse to provide us what everyone deserves, dignity and respect. Our lives matter. And as chair of the Transgender Advisory Council, I will amplify the voices of our transgender family who have been victims of hate crimes and are the targets of harassment, intimidation, and acts of violence. Earlier this year, our community and its allies gathered together to show solidarity for Black trans lives. Our community is grateful for our partnership and love. There's more work to be done, and together we have the opportunity to make real changes for the betterment of the trans communities. I want to take a moment to thank Council Mitchell Farrell for his unwavering support and advocacy for my community, the transgender community. Capri Bardax for being a staunch partner of our community. And Chief Grimala for always reaching out to make sure that the community is treated with respect and dignity throughout the city. And I want to also say a very special thank you to all my partners in the Transgen Advisory Council, Jasmine, Creighton, Alexander, Lockie, Fuller, Kiana, Herrera, Eden, Anai, Luna, Gia, Rian, Olais, Maria, Ramon, Sable, Simone Loreca, and James Wen. As mother of the transgender community, 
I want to take a moment to remember Uni Gary Herrera, a well-known member of the transgender community in Los Angeles who lost her life yesterday. May she rest in peace. May we all have a safe and blessed Transgender Awareness Month. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Samala. Um, that, that last remembrance with the unfortunate murder of, of Ms. Herrera just yesterday really brings into focus why we're all here. Um, but I will say this of the TAC, it is really wonderful to see the TAC and the LAPD and the city departments coming together to make sure the trans community in Los Angeles feels safe and is treated with respect and dignity. Uh, and we will continue to do that relentlessly more determined than ever, uh, especially based on what happened yesterday. Uh, as an elected official, it is my duty to implement policies that help to protect trans lives. I work closely with the Transgender Advisory Council and take their recommendations to the City Council on issues and topics affecting the trans community. These include supportive services for the homeless, HIV, AIDS care, job creation opportunities. I'm working with the Transgender Advisory Council, the Civil and Human Rights Department, and the Personnel Department to actively collaborate on creating the first citywide transgender and gender diverse inclusivity training for staff, all staff, and all workers in the city of Los Angeles. We are the largest municipality to require sensitivity training strictly as it pertains to the trans community. I have funded and supported LGBTQ friendly youth homelessness and transgender organizations in the 13th Council District, including Asian Pacific AIDS Intervention and Treatment, Covenant House, Bienestar, Los Angeles LGBT Center, and Youth Emerging Stronger. For nearly four years, I've partnered with the transgender community and the Los Angeles Police Department to expand the Midnight Stroll program. This program serves to conduct outreach and connect transgender sex workers and people experiencing homelessness to critical services and emergency housing. And to keep the community employed, I worked with LGBT community partners to create a jobs pipeline for formerly homeless youth, specifically transgender individuals in Hollywood. I've also led a delegation uh, to Tijuana, partnered with Salaf, which is the Salvadoran American Leadership and Education Fund, Casa Libre, and Equality California to provide outreach and services to LGBTQ asylum seekers at our border in Tijuana uh, with Mexico, many of them identifying as transgender who are awaiting entry into the United States. And on the other side of the border, they've got no one on their side. So it's really important that we do all we can uh, to care for this community as well, who just want to come to the United States and make a better life for themselves. Recently, I supported California State Senate Bill 932, which requires the State Department of Public Health and each local health officer to address needs related to sexual orientation and gender identity of individuals who are diagnosed with COVID-19. This is critical work on behalf of transgender Angelinos, and there is more work to do. Last summer, I worked with black LGBTQ plus activists for change who rallied tens of thousands of people for racial and social justice around the All Black Lives Matter installation in Hollywood, located in my district. The street design is a testament to the plight of transgender people of color and serves as a permanent reminder that we're obligated to dismantle the structural inequities faced by all historically marginalized communities who need the support and resources that organizations like St. John's and Children's Hospital provide. Speaking of which, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you the first of our two community partners who the city is recognizing as its Transgender Awareness Month honorees. St. John's Well Child and Family Center's Transgender Healthcare Program provides comprehensive transgender health services. 
The organization is committed to protective uh, and transparent health care, regardless of gender identity, sexual orientation, and or presentation. Joining us from the Transgender Health Care Program is Kazumi Yamaguchi. Welcome, Kazumi. And let's make sure you're unmuted. Sorry about that. That's all Thank right. You. Hi, my name is Kazumi Yamaguchi, and I'm the Associate Director of Transgender Health Services at St. John's Well Child and Family Center. Um, I would like to start by thanking Council Member Mitchell Farrell, Mayor Garcetti, and the Transgender Advisory Council for their support and confidence in allowing us to provide services to the transgender community in Los Angeles. I would also especially want to thank Mr. Jim Manja, the CEO of St. John's Well Child and Family Center, and Mother Karima Samala for their leadership and advocacy in building one of the largest transgender health programs. Through their vision, we are able to provide important and necessary basic services, such as men medical, mental health, dental services, but we also offer services such as victim of crime services, where advocates are on hand to serve the needs of the transgender community that have been victimized in California. Transgender right to health advocacy, where our community action board lobbies for equal and fair access to health care and health care reform. We also offer a homeless services program, an employment trans empower program, surgery referral program, assisting with needed gender changes and programs that um, address recovery and addiction. St. John's is the leader, catalyst, and model for the best care, long-term community health improvement, and sustainable health enhancing systems and structures in Los Angeles. We have been on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic, providing rapid testing, preventative education, and care for the public, provide health care to undocumented residents via My Health LA, and actively develop programs to empower and address the needs of all community members, especially the most vulnerable and disadvantaged members. These programs and services will not be successful without the staff of the St. John's Transgender Health Program who serve the community every day. At this time, I would like to recognize my staff, Tiana Herrera, Jennifer Rodriguez, Latrice Summers, Yendi Bermudez, Daniela Hernandez, Leslie Monroy, Roberto Rorete, Nube Cruz, and Robin Chogger. For those interested in learning more about St. John's and the Transgender Health Program, please visit our website at www.wellchild.org. Thank you again for this recognition. Thank you, Kazumi. And on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, I am proud to recognize your work and your team's work with the Transgender Health Care Program at St. John's. Congratulations, and we're so appreciative of all that St. John's does for this community. Our next community partner being honored today is the Center for Trans Youth Health and Development at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. This team at Children's Hospital is dedicated to partnering with young people and their families as they navigate their gender journey, uncover their gifts while helping to remove any institutional barriers blocking their path to achieving their authentic identity or their full potential in life. Joining us from the Centers for Trans Youth Health and Development is Jordan Held, a worker, a social worker at Children's Hospital. Uh, welcome, Jordan. Thank you so much. And thank you to Council Member O'Farrell, Mayor Garcetti, Mayor Garcetti's office, uh, this, the Transgender Advisory Council, the Department of Civil and Human Rights, and the LA Police Department. Uh, so the Center for Trans Youth Health and Development has been providing youth services since the mid 1990s. Uh, the clinic here started in the context of providing HIV care and was built on the backs of transgender women of color needing a safe and affirming space for quality care, which continues today. As one of the oldest clinics in the world and the largest clinic in the United States, we have over 1,600 active young people in care right now. Uh, I have an amazing team, a multidisciplinary team filled with medical providers, behavioral health providers, uh, case managers, uh, health educators, just a fantastic team um, serving the city of Los Angeles and beyond. 
Um, we have a robust research portfolio that really aims at moving the field forward in a positive and client-based approach. We do advocacy from the individual all the way up to the legislative level, um, continuing to protect uh, trans rights and move them forward. We see young people from the age of three, where we talk about gender identity until they age out at 25, where we send some of our young people over to St. John. So it's nice to see you here and being recognized. Um, some of the other things that we do, we provide trainings and do capacity building for Department of Children and Family Services, family courts, uh, Department of Mental Health agencies, and beyond. Um, through the BLUSH program, we offer sex positive sexual health groups and life skills series focusing on resilience building of our amazing young people. Um, we are able to serve through Children's Hospital Los Angeles youth with Medi-Cal, so we're able to not leave any young people out of the picture, which is so important when it comes to gender affirming care. Uh, currently, we have a five-year grant through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and the National Childhood Traumatic St Stress Network to create uh, the first ever trans community trauma treatment center, where we're able to provide free mental health services to our community. And lastly, though I walk through the world as a queer transgender man, the color of my skin affords me certain privileges. As a country, state, and city, we need to continue working towards the full equity and belonging of our trans siblings. We need to work towards dismantling bias, combating racism, and calling out white supremacy. We need to work harder to lift up and protect our trans brothers and sisters and keep our black trans siblings safe. If anyone ever needs anything, we are always here and we love everything that the city of Los Angeles does. And um, we're very, very privileged and proud to have our clinic here in Hollywood. Thank you. Jordan, so extremely well said, bravo, thank you. And we wanna thank you and the entire team at Children's Hospital for your pioneering work in this field. Um, you've benefited, benefited countless people and our community. So thank you so much. Congratulations to the center on your selection as this year's Transgender Awareness Month honoree. Every year on November 20th marks the observance of Transgender Day of Remembrance. The event was founded in 1999 to memorialize the murder of Rita Hester, a black transgender woman who was killed in her apartment in Alston, Massachusetts. Rita's death spurred this international movement. And I'd like to ask that we take a moment of silence to acknowledge the transgender and non-binary lives that have been taken from us since last year's observance. Please join me in a moment of silence and we'll follow it by reading the names of trans lives lost to violence. I wanna thank all of you and we will say their names. We will remember their names. We will not forget their names. And now I would like to start uh, by reading names and we'll all follow in suit. Yahira Nesby, New York, December 19th of 2019. Mia Perry, Washington DC, December 29th of 2019. Dustin Parker, McAllister, Oklahoma, New Year's Day, 2020. Nulissa Luciano Ruiz, Toa Baja, Puerto Rico, February 24th. Yampi Mendez Arrocho, Moca, Puerto Rico, March 5th. Monica Diamond, Charlotte, North Carolina, March 18th. Lexi, Harlem, New York, March 28th. Johanna Metzger, Baltimore, Maryland, April 11th. Serena Angelique Velasquez, Ramos, Puerto Rico, April 21st.
Britain. Leila Elias Sanchez, Puerto Rico, April 21st. Penelope Diaz Ramirez, Puerto Rico, April 13th. Nina Poop, Sikaston, Missouri, May 3rd. Haley J. Oregon, San Antonio, Texas, May 6th. Tony McDade, Tallahassee, Florida, May 27. Dominique Remy Fels, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, June 9. Leah Milton, Liberty Township, Ohio, June 9. Jane Thompson, Mesa County, Colorado, May 9. Selena Reyes Hernandez, Chicago, Illinois, May 31st. On behalf of Mayor Garcetti and Francisco Artiga from the Civil and Human Rights Department, we mourn the loss of Brian Egypt Powers, Akron, Ohio, June 13th. Rayla Stone, Little Rock, Arkansas, June 25th. Mercy Mack, Dallas, Texas, June 30th. Marilyn Casetas, Brawley, California, July 2020. Shakiri, Shaki, excuse me, Peters, Amite City, Louisiana, July 1st. Bree Black, Pompeo Beach, Cal Pompeo Beach, Florida, July 3rd. Summer. Taylor, Seattle, Washington, July 4th. Dior H. Ova slash Tiffany Harris, Bronx, New York, July 26th. Quisha D. Hardy, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, July 27th. Please join me now in raising the names, the soul, and the spirit of the following beautiful lives lost. Aja Raquel Roan Spears, Portland, Oregon, July 28th. Key Sam, Lafayette, Louisiana, August 12th. Arian Burnett, Independence, Missouri, September 19th. Maya Green, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, September 28th. Michelle Micheline Ramos Vargas, San Germán, Puerto Rico, September 30th. Felicia Harris, Augusta, Georgia, October 3rd. Brooklyn Deshuna, Shreveport, Louisiana, October 7th. Sarah Blackwood, Indianapolis, Indiana, October 11th. And Angel Unique, Memphis, Tennessee, October the 2nd. Uni Carey Herrera. Miami, Florida, November 17th. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, on November 20th, Los Angeles City Hall will be illuminated in the trans pride colors in their memory. We will not forget their names. Some may ask, why does the city of Los Angeles acknowledge Transgender Awareness Month? The City of Angels cares for the visibility, the safety, the dignity, and policies that protect the transgender and gender nonconforming communities. We are all made better when we see everyone else as our equal. Congratulations again to all of our honorees. Thank you to our partners who collaborated on this event today, especially our friends at Channel 35 here in the studio. Thank you so much. 
for helping us produce this event virtually. Thank you. God bless. And may the rest of 2020 and all of 2021 bring all of you the blessings that you deserve. Thank you.